people, good people. What's good? You know what it is. What's good? good. You know what it is. We live. So wait, um, wait for just a couple people. Right, right. As, we, as, as I'm talking about it. Um, not as I'm talking about it. As we're starting. That was ridiculous. Let you us are, know if you, you can are hear ridiculous. us. Let us know if you can hear <laughs> us. Um, we're not getting signal on our end, but we want to make sure that if, as long as y'all can hear us, we don't even need signal on our end. Y'all need to have the signal. So let us know. We're trying to get the uh, the Facebook situation set up now, but YouTube is here, is in the building. We got five people watching and zero likes. I don't understand that mathematics, but let's get this arithmetic up. Hit that like button. Stop playing. Hit that like button. What's good, Chris Wright? We see you. We say yes. He can hear us. Kenneth says he can hear us. What's good? Uh, drums token was good. Moose is in the building. He said, make sure your phone is far away from the mics. Get your phone. It's right. His phone is right here. Get it as my far phone, away. My phone is right here, bro. Throw it. Throw it away. Give me a second here as we get Facebook. And Facebook Medallia, is live. Migdalia says, can we get a happy New Year's? Turn up, baby. You know what it is. New Year's out here. It's New Year's every day. It's Chris oh, no, Orton the second was good. We 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 have a uh, we have seven people viewing and only the two live likes? now and only, and only and only two likes. What's, what's Facebook saying? Anybody over there who's coming in? Who has joined? Was good. No, no one's joined in on Facebook yet. Y'all know what y'all need to do. You need to hit that like button. <clears throat> you definitely need to turn on post notifications. You definitely need to get your questions ready for after. We talk, tackle the uh, the topic uh, on today's podcast. We'll write them in. We'll go back and we'll start um, answering questions, man. Definitely, definitely need to um, download the app, Drum Tracks app. We got, we got to show love to the sponsors. You have to download the app. This is how we're able to do what we're doing on today. You so know what it is. Download the app. Stop playing. Cut the shift. You know what it is. Share all of this content with people that you think would love it people that you think would hate it, and anybody that would love to debate with you about what we talk about. Um, any updates on that before I tackle this topic? Uh, nah, man. We, okay. just have, we just have a bunch of uh, drum lessons that you guys could uh, get access to. We have, I'm working on new tracks. New tracks are coming to the app in a few weeks. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff. If you have not yet, though, signed up for the, for the $9.99 membership, listen, you, you definitely want all access to the uh to the app and all the features you already can stream tracks for free you know that but you know whoa 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 whoa! how much for free how much does that cost <laughs> well if you if you carry the two because <laughs> last time somewhere. i forgot to do that and and, and you got to move the decibel a couple times but at the end of the day it's simple it's simple it's free and uh but if you want access to offline streaming if you want access to our video library if you want access to all the other great stuff um, listen, all the stuff that we do, all the stuff that we have there is for you guys. It's for you guys to be able to explore your own creativity, find your own voice. So that's why we do it. It's $9.99 for the subscription. Um, so, yeah, sign up. All right. Let's get into today's topic. Let's get into it. Um, it says go to school to learn music business. I like, should you do that? There was a should question we? from the last live podcast three days ago. What was that um, question? Aaron Shields. Shout out to Aaron Shields from the last podcast. Wait, I know wait, he's... wait, wait. Before you answer this question. I, some we got some people in the Facebook, and I got a shout out to my brother, Chinoy Rhodes, who's in the podcast. Who wrote to, the record Galaxy from top to bottom? I we need your permission to put it on the app. He 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 always says that I never shout him out. He doesn't. No, I shout him out. I just shouted him out Chinoy, on the internet. Can we put can we put Galaxy on the app without drums? You know what? We should put that whole EP on the app without drums, bro. Since you wrote all of it from top to bottom and had no help, we need your permission. I mean, I did all the music. Nah, the production, that's but. that's debatable. Chinoy says, "Yeah, you know what it is." He didn't I, say, "Yeah." He said, "Oh yeah." So that's that's another five tracks on the app. Easy. It's like eleven on the record, ain't it? I don't know. I have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back. You know, dude. And what about the ones that wasn't on the record? Like, uh, what's that one called? Um, the Michael Jackson joint, for sure. <laughs> uh, oh, with salutations the on the that? album. Yeah. What about lights? No, it wasn't. Salutations. Wow. Lights, camera, action. That's the floor on the floor joint. It's not on the album. Yeah. And the and the and the uh the the native sample. 
the Native Amer the Native American yeah, the sample. Chant, the, the chant. like the the kind of the down south hip hop groove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them them all gotta go. You got tracks, bro, and it got lyrics on there. So so for drummers, um, to learn how to play not just with the band but to play with an actual artist. Come on, can't be soloing over some parts of the songs because the words need to be heard. They need to be understood. Absolutely, with the rec, throw the record on there, bro. You got Come records, on. family. And when they hear Galaxy, they don't think that thing dropped last week. They're going to be like, bro, when did this drop? Like, uh, that two, part. 2008. Your boy Blake, the great, has made his way into the building. Blake, the great bishop. All right, today's topic. Aaron Shields <laughs> wrote three days ago on our last podcast that, you know, some of y'all missed. But it's all good. It's all good. He said, I dropped out of music college, started to play at two churches to sustain myself. But I'm thinking about going back to learn the business side of music. Okay. But would learning from YouTube be more beneficial when it comes to the business side of music? So that, I don't think he's referring to drum lessons. Right, he's talking about business. Business, like contracts and all of that stuff. Yeah. Have you ever gone to business, music, no, gone to school for the business side of music? I took a class. <laughs> what does that entail? That means that I didn't go to school, like I didn't go get a degree in music business. How long I was that class? Take, it was a semester. Okay. How long is a semester? I don't, uh, bro. Like I'm just for for other for four people. months, maybe. Okay, I'm saying I don't know. we got some high schoolers on here that follow us. Come on, you can't let them know what a semester is in college. They, they don't know. Okay, well, I have been out of college for a long time. <laughs> Do not take my word for what the semester is going to be for you at your local college. Oh, man. Secondly, that's not how long a semester is. Is not even the question. What we're talking about is should should uh, he go to school? Hold on, wait. Jacque Dixon. He says, good people, we live. <laughs> <laughs> what up, what up, what up? Ivan, we see you. What's good, what's good? All right, go ahead. So, should he go to school? I took a class. There was a lot to learn in that class. You know what they did in the class, though? They gave us a book. And they said, we're going to read this book, and we're going to talk about the book. Then your answers are in the book. <laughs> and the, Like most classes. Right, right, right. But we, we had a teacher who also knew someone who – had a friend who wrote a song that got placed on a television show that was on, I think, HBO or Showtime at the time okay. called Californication. Oh, you remember that show? Oh, do I? That was I the think show. The teacher that Eight I, seasons, Doc. The teacher that I had knew the person who wrote the theme song for that. Okay. And of course, that changed that person's life who right. wrote the theme song. Uh, they made a lot of good money because not only did they make money every time the the episode aired, but when they wanted to re-air, when they wanted to put it to DVD, mm -hmm. when they wanted to do season two, some of these when they wanted to have commercials, like, some of the opening theme songs are whack though. I'm not gonna lie to you, but that's not the point. But we're not credit. talking about art right so now. You need to stop. We're talking about start business. Start making play alongs for movies and shows. Play alongs, sure, for movies and shows. I mean, you can throw just drumless. Tr then, then we're not talking about play okay, alongs look, anymore. Put drums on there. And then Release put it on, on the app. app. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I don't know listen. if every I don't know if anybody if, if if you guys haven't noticed this yet, but every song that I put out with any band that I'm playing for is going on the app. That's just <laughs> it's just the way it's gonna be. It you makes should, life easier. You should get into video game stuff too. Yeah, man. I mean, it's something I've been thinking about as far as uh, the music that I make because I make a lot of music. Like, I mean, I don't know all the tracks on the app except for like I don't know seven. I made them, uh, recorded them, the whole nine. The app, my band. I do whoa, a lot whoa, of the production whoa. We, there. Got a, we got three comments from Ivan. He says, yo, Sticks, creator of the drum tracks. And then he says, cut the shift. So I think he's referring to you saying that you make all the music. But it's okay. We'll let you continue. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. <clears throat> Shout out to Ivan. I, I'm not he going, gets it. I'm not going to uh, dignify Ivan with an answer. In fact, I believe Ivan is just trying to feed your ego because he knows that you <laughs> <laughs> are not filled up within yourself. And so he's just trying to. <laughs> Ivan's the truth. Nine people watching, man. Double, I'm mean, uh, not double tap. Hit the like button. Stop playing. So at the end of Cut the, the shift. at the end of the day, it is something that I've looked into as far. But what I've learned is though, is I don't know if going to school, the the action of going to school is going to make me a success in music business. Because like I said, if you're just looking for the knowledge, the knowledge is is everywhere on the internet. You can look on the internet. You can look in books. Uh, I watched a. Uh, uh, interview a while ago and it was chance the rapper's manager mm. who did his long interview and he talked about and he didn't have any real experience like no successful experience before he started managing 
Chance the Rapper. And I don't know if Chance the Rapper has the same manager today as he did back when I saw that interview. But this is around the time Chance was like after he first got real hot. And then, you know, his manager was a young dude, you know, that came along the scene with him. So he talked about he had talked about books that he read. And so one of the things that I would recommend, if you have the money to go to school, I, I'm not against it. If you can afford it, if you don't have to go into debt, if you don't have to, like, financially ruin yourself <laughs> to do it. I, 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 Because at the end of the day, it's not the only way, but it is a way. And uh, you can learn that way, but it doesn't guarantee you success. So that's the thing. If you think that it's that going to school and getting the knowledge and the education is going to guarantee you success in that field, that's where I feel like you'd be misleading yourself. I think that happens a lot, right? People go to school. They pay this money to go to school. A lot of people get student loans. Then they graduate. Man. And then they're like, man, okay, cool. Now is the six-figure job is coming or close to six-figure job is coming. And then it doesn't. And they find themselves driving Uber mm -hmm. or Lyft. And there's nothing wrong with doing those things, but it just wasn't what you were expecting. It's not why you pay 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, 100 thousand dollars to go to school. Fam. And so I'm just saying, if you want the knowledge, the knowledge is available. Now, what college does give you, though, it does, it can, I'll say, can give you a network of people who could possibly go on to do great things and you will have made friends, hopefully, potentially, everything that I'm saying is potentially with these people. And if you have made friends and they remember you and they move up and now you're trying to come up and you know them and they know you and you have a relationship, that's leverage. But if, if, and also if you uh, have teachers or mentors who may actually be in the industry, they may be actually in the business and you're actually a talented person. See, I don't even really know what you want to do or what that person wants to do in the music industry. Is he just trying to be a producer? Is he trying to be an engineer? Is he trying to be a manager? Is he trying to run a record label? Are you trying to, what are you trying to do? You're trying to be a, 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 an agent, a touring agent or, or a booking agent? Are you trying to be a promoter? Like these are all different things that happen. In the, maybe you want to be an advertiser. I don't know. Do you just want to be a musician? Blake the Great says, um, nowadays, education is required to get a job. What do you say to that? Do you need an education? You know, it's funny. I think I, just, I think I just read somewhere recently that Apple and Facebook have removed their requirement to have a college degree to get the job there. They have removed? Removed their... the requirement. I have to, like, double check that, but I would say look that up because I think I've read that somewhere. Uh, well, at least a high school diploma. Yeah, high school diploma. But we're talking like every yeah, that's that's is, that's a given. You need a high school diploma to work at Target. Jacquee Dixon, uh, right after Blake the Great says that's a fact. Uh, I think he was referring to what you were saying earlier. School really doesn't guarantee anything, but um, all caps debt. Well, school's not what guarantees debt. You guarantee yourself debt when you decide to go with student loans to, to take on the debt. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm not a fan of debt. I don't like, like, I have a car note right now, and I hate it. <laughs> I hate owing people money. I, period. And so I, 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 I think, that, of course, I'm working as hard as I can to pay that off as soon as I can because I literally hate the fact that I have a car note. Um, Ivan um, just said, uh, very true. I recently auditioned for a church gig, well-known uh, well church in Illinois. And the only reason he didn't get the gig is because he didn't go to school for music. Time out. <laughs> he said he 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 auditioned for a church gig, a well-known church in Illinois, and the only reason he didn't get the gig was because he didn't go to school for music. That is really hard to believe, bro. <laughs> that is really yeah, shy town, though. You know, Calvin's of the world. Do you think? Time out. <laughs> Do you Marty time out. Fitzgerald? Time out. Come on, Brody. Stop. Do you think Calvin went to school for music? <laughs> I don't I, know the answer. But I do tell you, you think what, he went to school for music. I think he definitely went to to a the school. school of hard knocks. No, listen, <laughs> listen. Like, what do you think? He, he definitely went? went to Berkeley and to MI to do a clinic this year. Did he go to those schools? He went and did. Have you ever talked about graduating with a degree? He has been. Okay, so let been, me put it this way: He's been to the school. When, how old was Calvin when he first played on his first professional recording? Oh God! He had to be. I think he was a teenager. Yeah. I, was, I listened to an interview he did. I think he was like four, 13 to 14, 15 years old. I thought it was sixteen, but something like that. Ricky Dillard, uh, right? Old, old, 
album just re- way back. Right. He and back. he didn't need a college degree for that. And that's church. And he and he But it depends on the type of church. Maybe so. So let's ask that question. CCM Either. church where they have CCM you church. You need a music degree to be a drummer at a CCM church. <laughs> Come, you play at a CCM church. Do you have a degree? <laughs> Do you have a degree? Buddy, listen. You need to know how to play. <laughs> you need to know how to play. <laughs> That's what you need to know how to do. And is it good to be able to read some basic charts? Absolutely. Ooh, Absolutely. Weird. I'm not knocking the education, but I do not think under any circumstance is most Christian churches. I don't know if you're playing at like church is called Willow Creek. That sounds like a CCM church. Sounds just <laughs> like a like that sounds a, like a straight, straight five one six four. <laughs> And they want you to read me. <laughs> they want you to read the chart. So, so listen. Uh, Woo! I, I'm they not, want you to read charts for the Jungle Beat. I'm do go go do go do go do go do go do do go do go do go do go do go do go do I just I can't. I can't. Not what he said to play music to play. Uh, hold, music hold, up, play hold up. Hold up. The homie Sean Russell from high school just j- jumped into the podcast, bro. He was good, fam. He went to your high school. He went, yeah, he went to my high school. Okay, I was like, we played football together and everything. So, how, um, grandma lived around the corner from my grandma the whole night. Yo, Sean, uh, how many wins did y'all get combined? First of all, oh. first, first of all, <laughs> first of all, you're not, you're, you're not gonna get at me like that. You're not gonna get at us oh, like that. Bro. First of all, he, he went, to, he, oh, he went season. to Mary Loma. So I don't we just, know what you're we just talking throw about. That out there. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sean knows. What I I'm don't talking know about. what you're speaking of. Okay, man. I went to the school of hard knocks. Okay, you know what it is out here. Um, what's all what's what they saying on YouTube? He said, uh, Blake the Great says that Jungle Beat is the intro to your great name. Facts, true, yeah. and and to like a thousand other songs, a thousand other CC. The that Jungle Beat, I don't even really consider it Jungle Beat, but that Tom Groove with Four on the Floor is like a staple in the CCM, just like um, the bump is in the Black Church. Sure, like if, whether it's a slow bump like Bless That Wonderful Name or you actually playing. Um, whatever it takes, the TD Jakes, oh, uh, Miranda Curtis, <laughs> I'm all in. That, I'm all that's in. a staple. Like you just, you have to know how to play. <laughs> it. I'm sorry. What? Sean wrote in. We was one in one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got that one, no, Brody? Brody? And it was against y'all. Hey, listen, <laughs> I don't know what you speak of. First right? of all, the Sean, school, you didn't have to do that, man. I you put it like this. Out there like that. The school that I went to. <laughs> they had oh won God, a game. The varsity team had won a game in 10 years. Little, no, it was nine years. And then the game they won, yeah. <laughs> this is how embarrassing it was, the football team. The game they won, it was because the other team was disqualified because their best defender, the middle linebacker, was ineligible. It wasn't supposed to play. Okay. However, they lost 61-3. to three. <laughs> So – whether he played or not, it was always a wrap. It was they scored sixty one points on us. You man. wasn't finna win. Who was y'all playing? It was uh Rio. Rio. Oh, we didn't play them. If it, I was gonna say if it was Grant Nevada Union, they was putting sixty one points on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, the football team, right, man, they was man, they was awful. <laughs> it was really bad. Anyway, at the end of the day, my point is if you're going to school for mu- for mu- music business, if you're going to school for music or whatever, the information if you're just doing it for the information because you just want to learn the stuff, the information is all over the internet. Shout if, out to Willie Smooth Cat. Shout out to Poke Poke Chicken Guard. Go ahead. If I'm doing shout outs, right? If if you want to, if you're looking for something else, like if you're hoping to network, you could do that at school. But there's a ton of networking events outside of that as well. Uh, I don't think you have to go to school to learn the music business. I I don't think that you have to spend that money. However, if you can afford it, I'm not mad at you. Especially but I'm you saying all I'm saying all I'm saying is I don't recommend the debt. If you get a scholarship, you cool. Um, or if you have the money, if you got it like that. <clears throat> what you definitely should not do is be on this uh, podcast watching without hitting the like button. That's number. That's not, and that's on period. Fourteen people here, five likes. I just don't understand that's, how you guys that's, come that's in. That's on YouTube, right? On YouTube, I don't even know what it is on on Facebook, but they need to hit the like button too. What I can say is, school. What school will do is it it does pick for you because when you try to go without school with youtube there's a whole lot of information out there and so you have to go through all of it just to figure out what works best for you right. what school does is they say hey listen this book this method this worked best for 
a handful of people that we know. Right. This is what you're doing. This is the this is the curriculum that we use. So study this book. So if you want that, and it's one perspective, it is one and perspective. So you but can, if you want them to pick that perspective for you, then right? Go to school, right? But if you want to go through the other thousand, by all means, have at it. Because there's 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 these things, this technology that came out like thousands of years ago, called books, right? <laughs> so well, you, I mean, they didn't. I thought you was gonna go so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you was about to get real well, deep. In, when they in first started writing, eloquent. On, when they first started writing things down on paper or on walls or however they were writing it on on uh, whatever they were writing on papyrus and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. that was that was like technology back in the day. Nobody could, nobody was writing anything down. Now we can record stuff on this paper and have it forever. Then the printing press happened. Yeah, and all of a sudden yep. we can mass produce. Yep. Now we have books, and you know what? It's even it's even crazier now, yep. bro. We got audible books, <laughs> audio books. They don't even, you don't even have to read it. They'll read it to you. They'll read it to They'll you. Read it. Remember story time in kindergarten? Wasn't it great? Wow. You, you can now have that. You know, story time put the kids to sleep though, right? Well, it depends on the story. Because okay. I used to be one of the kids. Sometimes I'd be like asking questions like, nah, bro, we trying to get this sleep. Well, that was you. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you can, you can have story time with, with, Anything you want to know, there's thousands of books of people who did not know anything about the music business who became successful, and they're telling you how they did it, telling you what to learn, what to look out for. They got books that all this stuff. Okay. I got real quick. Go ahead. I got three comments over here. The the homie Sean said he said uh, when he coached Marilyn, he took him to the playoffs. I don't know what school said, that is. He, he said we played Rio and got scraped by them too. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what school you're talking about. Family. You know exactly what we talk about. <laughs> I know yeah, okay. nothing of the sort. Right, just like you made the drum tracks happen. Got you. Go First ahead. of all, I know, you know what it is Got out you. here. And you know what it is I out here. That's know. my point. I, I don't know what y'all Comments are, on YouTube, on, what they family. say. I'm from Sunnyside, California. What they say <laughs> on YouTube. Chris, <laughs> God. Um, Chris Wright says, that's why it's easy to remember a song and bring... And boring, and boring to play. play. It is because every CCM, CCM song has the same drum pattern. That's a fact. Yeah. Jacque Dixon says, can Damani send the PDF <laughs> to the Bacata the Boogity? I need it for my Kojic Church audition. First of all, do they do they do auditions at Kojic Church? No, you know how, no, you know how drummers get hired He's at? being sarcastic. I know he is. But I'm just saying for the other guys who's listening, because there's one guy who really feels like he did not get his church job because they... Because Willow Creek... Said that Christian he didn't have it. He, you have to have a music degree to play the drums. <laughs> nah, them cats was, they didn't like your plan. They really. was gassing you, bro. They lied to you. They came up with an excuse. They thought you couldn't play. That's Man. exactly what happened. That's what they thought you couldn't play. They said, How can we tell him that he's trash? But they didn't want wow. to say that. Wow. Whoa. Really? You think that's what they thought? I'm I'm promise you. What church do you know says you can't play here because of music degree? They may not hire you to be like the head. Nah, like well, on drums? Now on drums. Some churches may not hire you to be. They told you to go get like lessons. worship pastor or the the. Oh yeah, worship if, pastor. If you if you didn't if you don't have a, a degree or whatever, but but there's a lot of churches that will though too. Uh, or the minister of music. I think he's playing CCM the drums. Got the worship pastor. And I think that on. they're telling you you need lessons. That's exactly what they're saying. Man, you know you know that's what they're saying too. Because as soon as you when I first read the comment, you was like, ah, bro, I ain't never heard of. You got to you got to get better on drums. That's what it is. Um. What are some good? Oh, Blake the Great says, "What are some good books to read about music? A uh, music or the business of music?" Uh, Blake, because the stuff which, that I have, is, which is I have, I have, I, I myself honestly would have to get something updated. I don't have the updated stuff, but I'm sure if you just Googled, Caden said, "I just tuning in. What did I miss? Everything, bro. It's over. It's a wrap, right, dog. We taking questions now. But at the end of the day, if 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 you want to find out what the most relevant books are today, I would uh, go into Google." Search that joint. Just type in Music Business 2019, and you'll get a ton of books. You'll probably get some old ones that are still really good. Or you can go on. This is this is one of my favorite things to do. When I'm, like, new into a uh, topic, and I just recently did, uh, did this, like, a week ago, went on to YouTube and typed in books for whatever the subject is, right? Okay. You're going to have people who are doing video that say, hey, if you want to get good at this, you got to read these five books. Or you got to read these 10 books. These are my top 10 books for this. My top five books for that. And you can look at them, decide which ones. I, I just judged off the cover. I was like, yo, that <laughs> one looks interesting. I like the title of that one. And I I mean, but I do audio books. So yeah. in a month, I can go through seven books. Okay. And so I'll choose the out of their top five list and go through all five. And I'll look at. Oh, uh, see, see, no, no, no. We got to stop right there. 
Listen to what he just said. You go through how many of all, the top five? All five. All five. There's no shortcuts in nothing. Go through all, even if you only found something helpful in book three, you go through all five. Right. And here's my other tip on that. Look at like three or four different YouTube videos that say what's my top five or my top 10 or whatever and find the books that overlap, the books that they all mention, right? Because mm -hmm. this person may not mention a book that's on this person's list, that's not on this person's list and so forth and so on. But if you find the five or 10 that match, then you'd be like, apparently these, these ones are on to something. Right. And then you can do it that way. There's your answer. Um, Willie Smooth Cat says... <clears throat> would having a scholarship in music help you get gigs for famous artists? No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> what? Just, you're not going to elaborate or nothing. Just give them. That's the answer, bro. We got a homie who just, we just talked about this. Oh, and I just, yeah, I just did. talked to him. I forgot about yeah, that. I just talked to him yesterday. We have a homie who moved to LA like three or four weeks ago. Yeah, it's a couple months, but sure. It ain't been no couple months, has it? July fifteenth. Same thing. So we got a, we got a, we got, a, we got, a, we got a homie that moved to LA like two months ago. He only knew the people who he already knew that moved to LA. That was from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's already been traveling with Kanye West on their uh, Sunday service. Sunday service gigs. No degree. No degree. At all. He's not even that good. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Brody! Whoa! I'm messing with you. No, Whoa. real talk. There is some people in that group because it's like it's like a drum line. It is a drum line. Um, but you know the drummer. So some of them did go to school, but you don't right. you don't need it. you don't need to go. No, you know what he did? He met some people at a shed. Well, it's quiet. It's it's quiet. It is absolutely he to, quiet he, in he here. He went to a shed when he got to LA. And he met some people there. They were he was cool people. They thought he was cool people. He thought they were cool people. They became cool. Networking. Then they're at a shed. They heard him play. They're like, oh, he sounds good. Now we can call him for a gig. And he I, when I was talking to him yesterday, he was like, It's crazy, bro. I've been having to turn down gigs. I was like, What you mean? He said, Bro, just a little bit of networking I've done. They heard they've heard me play, so they know that I could play cool. So they just hit me and they like, yo, I'm finna be out of town. Can you come cover for me here? Yo, this and this is going on. Can you come through here? Yo, the Kanye situation is happening. Can you come through? Like it's literally relationships. So it's not the whole if you go to school, you you're guaranteed nothing, bro. Nothing. I know some people with degrees without jobs, <clears throat> like they're still finding and searching. And I'm not because what I'm saying is it's the, the, the college. The college route is not bad. I think it's not the best if you don't have money. And uh, but you you could take that route. I think the best the only time I would think about taking the college route is if it was the only way that I can get to my goal. Like if I wanted to be a medical doctor, yep. college is you have to go that route. There is no alternate route. I can't go read a book and then I'm going to get a job at, at you know what I'm saying? Like you got you're not going to be licensed that way if i want to be a school teacher there's a route that i have to go you know what i'm saying that pot but if you want to be a musician you just got to get good bro this is art if you want to get hired and be in the inner circle of how to to play the major pot get you got to get good and then make friends period I, there's no other that's it uh, Willie Smoothcast said, well, dang, Damani, LOL, because you told him no. Like, <laughs> that's the answer, right. bro. No. What, I mean, Blake what, says fire up to Oregon. Um, uh, Musa agrees that it is about networking. Oh, let me go back up. Um, Blake the Great also said, I was born and raised in Church of God in Christ. Was he The now? Kojic. I'm sorry. And he never had okay. to audition. Because <laughs> that's not how they hire, bro. He just needed to hold the pocket and follow First Lady on the Oregon. But you, you, know, how, you know how most of us find gigs? You, of course, you got to be a good musician, but somebody you know, typically, is how you get it, or they have seen you play, you have made friends, you've networked in some way, and then all of a sudden, you have you have a gig. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it works. Or, I mean, if you're lucky, you, you grew up playing at your church, and there was, wasn't 30 of you guys that played drums. Man. And then uh, maybe there was five of you, and you were the best one out of everyone, and then you got the gig when, the, you know, the OG drummer was done. <laughs> so, the OG always gets or you can or 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 if you're smart when you get good but they're still keeping the OG drummer you start networking outside of your local church and then you'll find a gig that pays 
Bro, because you'll have met some people. I don't know what's going to go through my mind when I'm 72 trying to hold on. To a church gig? To a church gig, and the yucks are coming up, and I'm over here just... Bro, you going to need that. I started this case to shift. You going to need that $150. Is this the mother thanks I get? Brody. They're going to be like, hey, listen, listen. <laughs> we, got a, we got a position for you here on the deacon board. <laughs> the trustees. Go ahead and let, the, go ahead and let youngster get on. Uh, Musa to... Uh, he said a comment towards Willie Smooth Cat, but it's along the lines of what you just said about networking. Uh, Musa said a friend of his studied in college for music. Mm -hmm. The dude's a freaking god on bass, so he's a old bass player. Okay. But because his lecturer knew some pe some famous people, he got referred to a gig with a celebrity. So just by him, um, so you know, man. his teacher, well, you know, just by his teacher knowing so you know. his teacher taking the class. So that in that regard, him going to school. Helped it helped him know someone. Helped him know someone. That's what I'm saying. Who I, knows people that can put right? Him that's on. what I was saying in the beginning, right? When I was talking about if you go to school, it's possible. Yeah. That, but but please understand that happened for your friend. That it and happened. He and he said he's a god on base. You got to You still got to be good. That you got to be wrong. Yeah. And that doesn't happen for everybody. Let's think about it. Think about all the guys you hear about that came from Berkeley, right? The Berkeley Music School in Boston. Think about all the guys you hear about that came from Berkeley that are now, you know, really known musicians having successful music careers and then think about the other ones you haven't heard right <laughs> if you can count on if you can count on your hand or if you can count even on five to 15 hands how many of the musicians you know from berkeley you have to understand that there are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds maybe thousands of students that go there every year and so most of the ones who have gigs are dropouts a lot of the ones that have gigs are dropouts it's true and miles davis also was a dropout school of juilliard he, he dropped out. That's the uh, for those of you who are real fans. That is the original video that started all this. It's what called, video? Do you go to drum lessons every week? That's not what the video is called. Learn a new groove. Or, what do you what do you know what it was called? Well, you 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 you. That's what it started as. Why your drum lessons are keeping you from getting better. That's <laughs> what it's called. And you mentioned about uh, Miles Davis dropping out of school. Man, you caught a lot of backlash for that. Yeah. No, I mean I stand on every word of it. I, I'm with it. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying they crucified you. You think so? I there was a lot of comments that was just trying to crush, but then you fast forward to today, and a lot of the musicians that people look up to are a bunch of dropouts. Yeah, a lot of the greats, like yo, this guy plays so solid. Oh, he has this gig. Is he didn't go to school, or he went and he quit? I'm not saying that you don't learn anything at music schools like like uh, Berkeley or or. And yeah, there are some people who have finished Berkeley, yeah, no, and, and, finished and, MI and have good gigs. I'm not, like I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with with those schools that you don't learn anything there. There are some amazing teachers there, some some great networking that can happen. However, what I'm saying is, you don't have to. Um, two things. Uh, let me go back up. Tim Papula says, "Any chance you can announce when you're about to stream on YouTube?" I think we've done it, man. Where would you like us to announce that? But, I, but we we've announced that we go live at 2.30, man, every Monday and Thursday. Well, I mean, you know, it, it ain't been right on time. That's on time. true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so you can't. I'm not, well, I'm just saying, like, if you just hang around, bro, between 2.30, 2.45, we here. We'll, you know we, we'll, we will try. I'm not going to promise it. We I can will, do it on IG. Yeah, on IG. We'll try to remember to say that on IG. Uh, Blake yeah. the Great has a good one. Says, can you guys explain how important it is to show up at rehearsals even though you not playing? I mean, I need some context. <laughs> I, um, I'm not showing up to rehearsals. I'm not playing. Now, what I used to do, especially when I was trying to be a better musician, I would show up to where the musicians were playing. Most of that was when in they church. Were when they were performing. It was mostly like church musicals and stuff like that. I went mm. to a few, yep. a few um, in my city, uh, what would you consider it? Bars where there was like a jazz trio. Jazz, it was really fusion. It was really jazz fusion, but they played some swing. And they had that, you know, nightlife, Sunday nights, Saturday nights, Friday, day, Friday nights, Friday day. What is that? Friday nights. Um, there's bars all downtown, probably in your city, too, where there's cats, you know, who are murdering on drums. You go and show up to that, even though you're not playing. You just go watch. You go sit and be in the atmosphere. Definitely did that in church all day long. And at the musicals, it was like 95 drummers on the wall, uh, uh, you yeah. know. Trying to get on because sometimes that like a Kojic uh, convention because you can actually get on. Hours. You can actually get on because the drummers would get tired yeah. and get up and allow you to play. But yeah, I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't go to rehearsals. I mean, unless you knew the people. I did show up to you. I showed up. I showed up to y'all rehearsal one time. Or, or I, at CLP, uh, at CLP, I showed up one time just to uh, hear the band. But that was because I knew everybody in the band. So you can do that. But just going to rehearsals just to be going. Yeah, I don't sorry. know if that makes you better. I mean, uh, being around makes you better, but you don't have to show up to rehearsal. Show up to the gig. Show up to the performances if you want to. I like the performances because, I, you know, especially when it came to church stuff. When you churches will be going over soprano parts and I'm the band is like, yeah, I don't want to sit through that. At least the performances at the church musicals or the, the fusion club bar, whatever, right. then you can see what's going to you, you see them playing. They're not stopping and starting. And this guy has to get his part down before we can move on. Like, nah, none of that. All right. Um, did Eric Moore did Eric Moore graduate from Berkeley? Carlos says no, no, no. Eric did not go to school at all. He just practiced. His he he's tail a product off. of that. Yeah, that part and and from what we talked about that hiatus effect. It's a um, podcast that we that? did called the hiatus effect. Like two podcasts ago, I think it's podcast forty nine. Check it out. Maybe podcast fifty. My bad. Check it out. Musa says there is a German dude that he sees on Insta Graham. He looks like it. He's a dropout. And is making it happen on his Insta page, posting licks every single day, getting that recognition. Um, the internet does help. It does. It's almost. I was talking with this about. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine earlier today, who is a coach, and he was basically saying, nowadays your social media is almost like your resume. Yeah. When people haven't seen you. It's one thing if you show up to a shed and they hear you play, like, oh, no, he's solid. Let's get your number. Let's exchange. Woo -woo. But if I just go, oh, my, my man D, he play everything. He play bass. He play keys. He play drums. The first thing they're going to say if they've never met him is. What's his IG? What's his IG? What's it? Can I, you got a YouTube. You got something that I can see him play all of these things. And I have to go find a video. And, and that showcases the talent that I'm bigging him up on. So absolutely, man, the Internet is a vital tool to help you. No thing help you spread how good you are on the drums show the world so no use social media still got to practice though you gotta get mr good. moore is a beast absolutely do you guys have a podcast that talks about dynamics did we do that we may have i know we did a i know we no i did a we did um a technique lesson on the app go to the app we got we got two left we got playing with power playing with finesse on the app There's, that's on the app um I know there was a drum tip Tuesday on some stuff like that. Right. Well, I mean, we can look back. If not, it's look something back. we can talk about for sure. 23 um, people watching. Um, 11, 11 likes. likes. Your mathematics is off. Why? How do y'all come in here and not, not hit the like button? I don't understand. Timothy Papula. Chang, chang, a lang, a lang. <laughs> wow. Chang, chang, a lang, a lang. Thank you, Jacqui. He wrote it. 23, 23 viewers, 11 likes. Come on, man. Um, I think that's it on the YouTube side for yep, questions. That's it on Facebook too. Cool. We won't be here for two and a half hours. Yep. So uh, anything else before we get up out of here? Um, man, honestly. Oh, somebody said on the last uh podcast, did we check out the Zildjian video jam or whatever it was? The answer is no, we did not. But I think we should start doing that to stay. That, that's pretty much drummers current events right um we will i would say we can try to start staying up on the newest videos that come out because they do the vic first has the vf jam right Sergeant right right has constant videos i mean it's just even though we rock aquarian there's all kind of drum companies that put out performances of people's favorite drummers so sure. i'm not saying we're gonna do it for sure <laughs> i'm saying we, we'll try to stay up to date so we could talk about it talk about what we like who we like why we like what they did um, definitely won't bash anybody because um, we're not we're not heathens. OK, we're someone said haters. does, does huh, Blake the Great said the last podcast was a move from God. I, thought I, about say, I wish I had a witness <laughs> in this place. And then there's a J Moan. What did you say? Does knowing how to D box. D box or beatbox. Beatbox help with drumming. Listen, we have a saying that says if you can sing it, you can play it. Facts. Um, and we do practice beatboxing our lick, licks or singing our drum uh, licks or our grooves or whatever the case is. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Ivan has a question for you. I don't see any questions from Ivan. 
<laughs> don't mind. Read it out loud, please. It's clear. It's a little fuzzy over here. No, it's not. No, it's clear. It's clear. It's it's clear. Okay, I see it. Okay, what 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 does it say? It says, Damani, <laughs> what, what about Michael Jackson singing? <laughs> yeah. So what about that? That's his question. That's not me. I'm. That's not me. I'm not on the dog on the day. I'm not on the Wiv today. That's right. He says, what about Michael Jackson singing? And I say, he's asking you. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> what about it? What about so Michael he, Jackson? So, he, so he's on the whiff today. I'm not. He, he asked he's the question. He's a whiffer. He so said, no. It's cool. He asked the question, what about Michael Jackson singing? And my answer, my, I, don't under, the, I don't understand you, the question. <laughs> what about Michael Jackson singing? Okay. What about it? Bill Cosby says, what's your opinion on e-kits like Roland? I hate all electronic kits. What's your, what's your take? I said I wasn't even going to go into. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of electronic kits either. I like I like drums, real drums. But no, I do like hybrid, uh, hybrid kits. kits. Okay, okay. Where, but when you're talking about electronic kits, you're talking about where the whole electronic kit is there to mimic what a real drum kit does. Yeah, I hate it. I like real drums, but I do like the the hybrid kits where you can add snaps, class, other things as you would use in production. A lot of a lot of pop gigs are required drummers to be able to do that now. Yeah, it's more than just playing the drums. Just so right. you guys know, because you because because it's not about you sounding like. You're playing the drums. It's about you sounding like the record. Yeah, and the records are not live drums. So, so I'm like, bro, just use it. Why don't you just use the drums from the record and press play on the on the laptop? But whatever, they want the drummer to play it. Um, Jacqui gave an answer for um, for Ivan. Uh, go ahead and read it out. Jacqui gave an answer for Ivan. Yep. What did he say? Legendary. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Listen, um, at the end of the day, man, I'm. I'm not I, I still like I know what I would use the answer legendary to, but he asked, what about Michael Jackson singing? And it was just so out of context. I'm confused as to what he's really asking. Um, OK, <laughs> Ivan said, please answer it for once. <laughs> That's what he said. Where? I don't... Answer what, Ivan? You said, what about Michael Jackson singing? <laughs> what about it? And I and I'm saying, what about it? What about you're, it? You're singing? saying what specifically about it? What are you asking me? What about Michael Jackson singing? What about it? Which he wants a specific question. I didn't get it. I didn't. All right. Get it. I let didn't me let me it. get down. Willie Smoothcast says we should do reaction videos of drummers. I would, but the but the little homie does it. Uh, Josh drum class. Shout yep. out to Josh. He's murdering it over there. I'm gonna start. I'm a. I'm a. Um. I'm gonna start watching more of his. Uh, I kind of stopped watching it. I ran out of time. Stopped watching it. I want to say I'm maybe three weeks behind on his videos. I might talk about his reactions, you know, as far as current events. <clears throat> um, Musa says Yamaha DTX 950 is amazing. They really tried to get the feel right. Here's the thing. If you want the feel of the real drum, you, you play the real drum. Simple as that. Listen, here's a question for you. How would you prep? For a concert, if Michael Jackson wanted you on drums, is that a is that a real question or you made that up? No, it's a real question. Who's that from? Musa. How would I prep? You just skipped over. Okay. Um, shout out to Sam Campbell. Was good. How would I prep? Number one, I would ask for all of the music in advance. I want the set list from top to bottom how the concert starts, and then I would also ask for a live recording of a previous concert if they could, like an actual live. And then um, because Michael Jackson's so famous, I would definitely go through all of the records that you could find on YouTube, the original okay. records first. But mind you, that's why I also asked for live because it could be different. They can have different transitions, yada, yada, yada. And then from there, I would take notes because a concert is an hour long men I'm am. So you want to take notes as far as when they do breaks, when they do big hits, stops, yada, yada, yada. I do my notes not like charts. I do my notes with actual words. So if it's, let's say it's Billie Jean, I would say, oh, drum start on, you know, drum start it, straight groove. And then we do this special thing in the bridge where it's two hits instead of one hit. I would do, I, if, they, if they put that in there, and that would be on my laptop. Or you could put it on your phone. I prefer laptop, though. Would you let MJ sing on your album? That's what someone just asked. Me? Absolutely. Because it's a it's a definite hit. No. If MJ sings I, I on a Mino album. I wouldn't say it's a definite hit. Well, first of all, the music we put to it, it's a definite hit. Okay. Oh. If MJ sings on a Mino record, it's going to just amplify 
what we're already doing. It'll give us a boost. Now, it's not going to make us as famous as Michael Jackson. Right. No, we need some, some notoriety. We get some notoriety. Let Michael Jackson sing on my album, too. Uh, question from Walson, Walson Otokini. He says, is it important to learn all the rudiments? Walson, um, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. The answer is yes. Learn them all. The The hard part is having them memorized for long periods of time. So learn them to the point where you can at least play every last one of them at a decent speed. But honestly, some of the rudiments, because there's the there's the standard 40, and then you have the hybrid rudiments where it gets into like, there's like 100 and 200 of them. Because hybrid rudiments is just combining rudiments together. So I mean, and when you look thousands. at the standard rudiments, I, 40 of them. I, I feel like they're just combining rudiments together too. They are. They're combining singles and doubles. But that's neither here nor there because Flams is a set of singles played right next to each other, close to each other, I should say. Um, <clears throat> God, this dude. So I would anyway. say learn them because I don't have, like if you called them out, if I was going live right now, well, we are live. If I was on the drums and you called some rudiments out, I would have to look it up like, wait, what's that again? Right. I what's, forget the, the, what's the sticking? What's the sticking again? Um, at the end of the day, though, at the end of the day, uh, it is good to learn them. It doesn't hurt. It's not. We're not saying that you should not learn them. You should. But do you have to? I don't know. If it's, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, Timothy Papula asked, can oh, wait? Let me ask. Uh, I, I, OK, I'll do Timothy. Then I'm going to jump back up to Chris. Right. He asked, can we read? Can we guys read music? I can read drum music. Well, I didn't say can we read music. It says can you guys read? Yeah, but down he uh, right under it says read music. Oh, okay, got you. I can read drum music. Yeah, I can read drum re like, music as well. Like set music. Uh, I can read it too. I'm not like crazy fast at it. Snare. I'm slow when it comes to. Snare I can I can charts. read it though. If you want somebody that can read like dumb dumb fast and is amazing, hit up Juan Carlos Mendoza or Jerome Flood. Period. Them, them two readers. Period. When it comes to reading other music, yeah, I read it. I read, uh, like, if I'm reading classical music, it's slow. Jazz charts are easy to read because they're just chord charts. Um, but even the melodies, for me, reading the melodies are slow. I can, I'd can. i rather hear it because once I hear it, it's a rap. I'm good. Uh, but I can. That's how I learned, like, the hand and exercises that I do. I had to read them. Oh. And it was... Uh, slow but once you get them you get them then i went on youtube to hear someone else play it to make sure that i actually read it correctly there you go so uh chris asked <clears throat> has sound issues affected your way of playing on a gig yes are you gonna elaborate or you i thought he just wanted to know <laughs> okay i guess we could do no, that i can elaborate. do yes and ye yes and no i can elaborate. that's the point of a podcast make it short yes Next. <laughs> to elaborate, I mean, I've played on gigs, man, where you where you're playing drums, and all of a sudden you can't hear the click. It's gonna affect how you play. You'll probably play quieter or lighter because you're really straining to hear the click to make sure you're on. Uh, I, I've played gigs where I couldn't hear the singers uh, or the rapper or whoever was leading, and I had to play differently to compensate for for not hearing. It's almost like walking around with your eyes closed. It can be. But on some gigs, if you know that it's not like it's it depends. So if you're on a gig where you know you're playing the same thing, the same way, it's the same format, you can get away with not being able to hear what you need to hear because you know what the format is. But when you're playing a gig, but it does suck still because listening is a listening to each other when you play is important. But when you're playing a gig like we do with Mino Yancey and it's live jazz fusion, then everybody is a part of a conversation and we're playing off of each other. If you can't hear what someone's saying, then it's very difficult to respond because you have no clue what they said. Um, then you try to make space so that you can hear them, and it, the whole thing could just get lopsided in that way. That part. Uh, there's a there's a there's quite a few comments. Um, Blake DeGray says, Jerome's voiceovers are hilarious. Absolutely. He's a genius for coming up with that idea. Yeah. <laughs> Jacque Jackson says, at the, at the end of the day, good people, go practice, LOL. That is a fact. Blake also said, if Drake can make a hit with Mike, so can we, so can y'all. He's referring to us. Bill Cosby says, I think rudiments are more for building your hands, technique, and dynamics in terms of usefulness. Later on, he writes, I feel like sometimes you can tell someone doesn't practice rudiments just by watching how they play the drums. How they hit the drums. How they hit the drums. My bad. I'm misreading. Yeah, that's true, I guess. 
Yeah, no, I get it. I I, I agree, actually, with the statement, man. I think that rudiments do help with technique. I think technique is important, though. I think that if you are struggling with playing certain things and you don't have control of your hands, rudiments and exercises with them can really open you up. Yeah, so practice those. Learn them. Uh, Sam Campbell, great question. How would you prepare if you don't read music, but the MD gives you music on how the arrangement is with no reference tracks? You can't prepare. (laughs) <laughs> you can't read. I would tell them, I would tell them, hey, listen, I need reference tracks because I, I play by ear. My reading is not um, that far up to par as far as what I would like it to be. Yeah. And if you need to find another drummer, just a professional way of doing things, hey, if you need to find another, dr- another drummer, uh, by all means, I would love to rock with, rock with you. I would love to make money, of course. Come on now. But it's quiet. If I can't do the job, can't do I need job. I need reference tracks, fam. It's, it's yeah, it just seems like you won't be able to prepare because you can't read. And if that's all that they're willing to give you, and even though it's 2019, see, here's the thing: the reason why people started writing music down, it was the first recording technology for music. Mm-hmm. That's how they recorded it. They said, "Um, how can I play this thing and it's amazing, and I want to hear it again? Write it down. Write it down. But now you can write it down, but you can also." record it aud- audibly so now we can hear it so this is what so i'm them. honestly honestly listening to something <laughs> tell them to tell them to send you the audio book thank you give me an audio book of the, of the, of the record because <laughs> it's because it's actually so when you hear the audio of the song the recording of it it is the same it's it's serving the same purpose that the original people who started writing music wanted to serve they just wanted to record it. They wanted to preserve it. They wanted to save it. But not only are you recording the notes, you're recording and preserving a performance of it. But you know there's those people in the world <clears throat> who try to demonize those who can't read and try to make themselves feel better because they can't play as good as the others who can't read. So See, here's they, the thing. They look down upon them. It's like, okay, writing. you know why people started writing things down? Hmm. Because once they say it, it's gone. It's yeah. done. Once the sound stops, it's over. So if you write it down, it's preserved and recorded. If I record your voice like this podcast, even if it's not written, as long as you can hear, you're good. Because mm-hmm. what's reading going to do for you if you're blind? Ah, the, I- quiet. the idea. Can Stevie Wonder read? Let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Could Stevie Wonder read music? Come on. But now. he's a genius. I mean, he can't read. Can Could read. Ray Charles read music? He reads with his hands. Could Ray Charles read music? Sheet music. Huh. Notation on the paper. Uh, he did read with. He did read with. Can he read the sheet music on the paper with his eyes? Oh well. No. At the end of the day, I'm not saying that reading is not important. It can't help you learn a bunch of things, especially if you like can't. If you're struggling to hear it, then reading may be one of the tools you want to use. So, some of these questions. I, I'm, why are I, they? Yeah, I have questions about the topic. Anyway, all right. Uh, Musa says, what "Is it Bill Cosby? No, it's Musa. It's Musa." He says, what recording software do you use when you do lessons with practical examples? Do you use plugins, too? What do you mean with, with when we do lessons with practical? Are you talking about just the drum lessons that we do? I, yeah. I've used Pro Tools. I've used Logic. I use Sonar, unfortunately. But, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you can tell the difference when between the, the videos I've mixed and the ones that he has. Hey, listen, man. I'm, uh, yeah. can, y- can y'all hear the drums? All right, then. Uh, Enough said. And you know, yeah, I do use plugins when I mix. Uh, on his software, there he he. Well, we all use plugins, but the plugins that you use, some are higher quality <laughs> than <laughs> others. You hey, let's so you know what it is out here. Uh, Walson says, "Why are there few drummer, few to no drummers as MDs in church or anywhere?" Simple, because if um you need a you need more than a rhythmic sensibility to lead a band there's a lot of melodic and moving parts and this is why most people say that if you play drums or any instrument you might want to learn a little bit of piano because if you learn the piano you understand uh how everything works together you see what i'm saying sam campbell says he's an md at his church as a drummer that's great man but he agrees there's very few a few yeah there's very few i'm not saying listen i play drums too and i've been mds in a lot of situations i look at it like like with, with sports the MD is like the quarterback or the point guard. There you go. They have to know every person's position plus their own. Um, you can't be a wide receiver, good at catching the ball, but not know what the offense alignment is supposed to do. Period. And be like, I'm going to lead the team. Because you not only need to know what they can do, you need to be able to explain to them how to do it or where they went wrong. Yep. And some MDs 
don't have that ability, so they shouldn't be MDs. Like, don't tell me I'm playing the wrong drum groove if you can't tell me what the correct one is. That's not an MD. So MD knows the stuff. Even if they're not excellent, let's say the MD is a, a piano player. Yep. And he's not a great bass player. But he does know, hey, you're playing F, and you should be playing G. He should know that. Instead of just going, that's the wrong note. It's like, uh, okay, I could have told you that. I mean, <laughs> what's the correct note? So... Yeah, that's why drummers are not MDs, because I'm telling you right now, I can't tell you if, if it's supposed to be E flat or A flat. I just be like, man, ask this guy. Musa says, I wonder if the blind dream. That's foul. Like, what would they dream of? That's foul, bro. I don't know if it's foul. That's foul. I think it's a legitimate question if you think about it. But I, uh, I don't know the answer to that. But OK, well, then they're dreaming all the time. Maybe so. They're seeing th- They're seeing what we can't see. Maybe our, so. Our physical eyes can only tell us what we can see right here. So with That's your true. eyes closed, they're letting their ears talk for them or, yeah, see for them, letting all the other senses. So, yeah, they're dreaming all the time. Um, um, yeah, that was that. I think that's it, bro. Bill Cosby said, bro, that's cold. All right, yeah. So we'll try to – we'll try to. Um, oh, oh, Marvin, Marvin oh. Collins just joined, and we just about to wrap up, Brody. You don't even be on the – Yeah, I do. He just joined. No, but there's a comment over there, Sam. That's Sean, bro. I've been, I've been. Already, that's old. That was way. You should have said something. Anyways, all right. Somebody did your, ask up here. He said, "Your mouth is open. Close it." Said something about our favorite drummers. Who are y'all, Willie Smooth Cat? Who are y'all favorite drummers right now? Out now, out right now. There's so there's a lot of drummers, man, man. that I really like for different reasons. There's a lot. Um, we top. always we always like. To, I, I like to start off with. We uh, talked about Mason last Mason, time. Mason because he's he's really good. Uh, Mike right. Mitchell is really good. Phenomenal. Uh, there's, but there's like a ton. I, I'm still, still a huge fan of uh, Eric. Mm-hmm. Also of uh, Ronald. Ronald Bruner Jr. Thomas Pridgen. Uh, but let's not forget about uh Justin Brown. Brody. Come Justin on. Brown. Um. Um. Justin Tyson. Let's not forget about uh Dana Hawkins. <laughs> That's not, he's not that's he's not fair. That dude is not. <laughs> let's uh let's um, uh there's uh, so many, bro. There's a lot. Uh, uh, the no names. I like this kid. Um he, he hasn't posted in a while, but his name is Young Two Sticks on Instagram. I believe Young is spelled Y-U-N-G. It could be spelled Y-O-U-N-G, but Young, the number two sticks. He's like 16. I love his feel. And then there's another guy I follow on Instagram. Plays a bunch of church church records. I mean, he does some pop stuff, but mainly church. Um, B underscore Sanders. The letter B underscore sent His feel is amazing. And his selection when he plays his feels. Look, Marvin amazing. says, what do you think about Tommy Ego? Young Two Sticks is the truth. First bro. of all, I don't even know who Tommy Ego <laughs> is. Do you? Yeah. What do you think about him? I think what do you think of Tommy Ego's playing? <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> I didn't even He's know. a legend. Listen, the one of the greatest, the one of the legendary DVDs, Groove Essentials. If you ain't got it, you gotta go get it. I have it. Tommy Ego? Tommy Ego. I have the Groove Essentials DVD. Legendary. Well, what do you think of his playing? Absolutely legendary. So you're saying that you would want to play like him? I would say that I want to reach a legendary status. <laughs> Just like him, listen. Bro. I, I, I I get it. I, I he I, nice with it. I understand. He nice with it. Okay. That DVD has done wonders for the drumming community as a whole. Has it? Has it has? So can you tell me what role that Tommy Ego's DVD has played in your drumming development? <laughs> it definitely allowed me to understand that taking your time works, and <laughs> there's a whole section on that DVD of just doing pad work. And that's all they're doing, where you get your hands on fire and working on the techniques okay. and okay. Uh, of things of that nature. Because sometimes, as drummers... So, in you, other words, you patterning your playing after Tommy Ego. Sometimes, as drummers... You let me finish answer? my statement. Oh, come on, bro. As know, drummers, can... we think it's boring to stay on one surface. Okay. And that DVD showed that, hey, listen, you can stay on one surface for now, and it will translate around the kit later. Most... People who just just stay on one surface, literally just stay on one surface, but hey, just do this just snare stuff. Ooh, ooh. But on that DVD, they do the snare stuff, but then they also go around because it's it's about groove essentials anyway. So, so so then you've patterned your playing after Tommy Ego. Is that what you're saying? 
I've I've patterned part of my part of the shed camp after Tommy Ego. The the warm ups were all on the snare. Okay, Tommy Ego. Cool. You know what it is. Cool, cool. Tommy Ego. Let's Musa says drink. Thomas Lang is too clean. Absolutely, he is a. Oh, it's Igo. My bad. Tommy Igo. My yeah. bad. But I have the DVD still. You know what it is. Uh, Willie Smoothcat, what about Kevin Hayden? Solid. Solid. I seen, I started watching him, or the first time I saw him was on a Gospel Chops clip. He's solid. I, I like the fact that I like the fact that he plays in an, an original band and expresses his musical creativity and is free. And he I don't know if he plays a big a big gig in front of thousands of people because he doesn't I haven't seen any clips of that. But I can definitely tell that he will be in a club in front of 20 people and be happy to express himself. And I'm like, yo, you get it, bro. And he's raw. Let, let's not forget that. The way he plays with time is ridiculous. Musa says Dre Energy. Is that a drummer? Uh, yeah, I have no idea who that is. I don't know who that. I don't know who that is. Is that somebody I need to look up? Maybe. All right. How do you feel about Thomas Lang or Dre Energy? Oh, he's asking about, yeah. Already answered Thomas Lang. I don't know Dre Energy. Is it wrong to only listen to black drummers? Because I just prefer. No, that's Walson speaking. He prefers to listen to just black drummers. No, it's not wrong. It's your preference. If that's all you want to listen to, then listen to it. I mean, who you're you? I believe you're a guy. You grown man. Do what you want to do. It doesn't matter. You can listen to whoever you want to listen to. <clears throat> what do you think of Jim Luca? Perlerito, I don't even know how to say that name, but we follow each other on Instagram. He's nice. He's nice. Left-handed drummer. He's nice. Uh, Blake the Great. Pocket tw Queen is nice, too. She is nice. Her pocket is ridiculous. Um, Very nice. Very nice. I remember her, though, before she was just Pocket Queen. Well, she was still Pocket Queen, but on Facebook, she was doing Road to Chops back when she went to Berkeley. I don't know if she finished Berkeley. She might have finished, may have not. She's another Berkeley alum. Yep. Uh, as Marvin Collins says, what about Chris Coleman? Brody, I, how do we forget about... Listen, listen, if you have not, you need to go back. I know you have to watch it in retrospect, but go back and watch Chris Coleman's DVD, Power and Precision, I believe it's called. I have that. He's one of my top five drummers in the of all time. He's on that list. Um, no particular order. And after you watch that DVD... Um, that's the DVD that put me on him. Man, ridiculous. Go watch his Nam solos from 2010. There's three of them. Yeah, he was going ham. Yo, <laughs> I don't care what. No, now the 2012 Minor Festival uh, drum solo that he did, the one in six eight murder, of course, and the other one he did murder. But the 2010 Nam joint, because he also did his uh, Guitar Center Drum Off Championship solo the 25 16 situation and he explained how he counted and all of that go go watch that actually his his guitar center drum off solo championship is on youtube as well and we got willie jemerson in the house man and uh you're late jimmy you're late stephanie c johnson also just or stephan c johnson also just joined and marvin asked what about juan hernandez who juan hernandez i don't know who that is I don't know who that is, but I know who might, Antonio Sanchez is when he's playing to, with Matt, uh, Pat Matheny. Bro, go, bro. What about Wes Watkins? Wes Watkins is for, <laughs> raw. <laughs> bro, you know who Wes is. So, so the dude I sent you, where um, his Instagram name is called Wes, I got my own sound. Yeah. And he be playing the grooves yeah. with the timbre. I know you're talking about. I, bro, first of all, before he became the old sound thing, uh, well, he still had his own sound. How he used to chop. Back in the day, it was different. I, I mean, it still chops. It's still like everyone else. We're all playing fast and what have you. But the way he was chopping when he, oh, man, I was like, Isaiah bro. Johnson? It was Isaiah. Well, that's you my remember, kinfolk. We got the same last name. You remember, you remember Isaiah Johnson? When he played Fifth Degree? And when he did, uh, he, raw. he did 80s pop too, I believe. He raw. He's raw. raw. He's Ridiculous. raw. No, like, nice with it. Um, Ridiculous. Somebody asked about CJ Thompson. <laughs> bro. There's too many C.J. Thompson clips. Uh, so what, basically, Devin basically, Taylor, Devin Sticks Taylor. We, what we're what we're seeing is if you're still joining, us, I mean, if you're still with us. First of all, hit the like button. Thank you, Sean Wright. We well, just go through comments now. Sean Wright's the homie too. Uh, dope. But what what what, what we're what we're what we're hearing is what we're noticing. What we're saying is there's a ton of amazing 
drummers. And we like them for all different reasons. And we like them for all the different reasons. There, there, there's so much you can get from all of them, man. Hit the like button. 22 people, 19 likes. I need three more likes, man. Hey, yeah, Stephen C. Uh, St Stephen C. Johnson was talking about uh, Chris Coleman. He said even before his DVD, the work he did with Israel Holden, who is like the Lord. He said, "Who was like no the uh, the band instrumental they did on um what uh what's the what's the record after new season is or is it new season? What's the record with uh with you are good on there? I think that's the new it's season. The, it's the second one because the first album was I don't remember Real all Life. those records, but I know that well that had to be the second one. Then it had to be the second one. It's the second one. They did a band instrumental. It's like a minute and a half long, bruh." Chris Coleman is the man. Yo, who remembers that John P. Key band instrumental though from the Not Guilty album? <laughs> you know what I'm talking you, about? You grew up with the Not Guilty. Yeah, that was like you the second. The, do you remember the? It was uh, it's called Breakout. You remember it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Who was on that? Was that was that Calvin? Calvin or Chris? Calvin. Cal Calvin. Calvin. Darius Woodley. Um, do I know? Do I know who that is? I'm not sure who Darius is. I uh, know Chris, not deeper level. Is it deeper level? I don't know, bro. I don't know. If, no, it wasn't a DVD. Well, maybe it is that one. I forget. Um, oh, who's that? Uh, uh, Nate. Um, what's the drummer's name? What's the Nate, the groove master now? Um, he said Chris was on a live recording of Not Guilty. Nate is a dope drummer. No, he wasn't. He was on the. He was DVD. on the DVD. He was on the DVD. Calvin Rogers was on the album. Listen to it. Who's the drummer? I'm about to say Nate Wood, but Nate Wood is not the drummer. Um, Nate Wood is a bass player. Nate Smith. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Nate Smith. Nate Smith is ridiculous. Bro, Nate Smith, obviously, the way he plays now is so sophisticated. But when he played with McCaslin, um, his solos are ridiculous. He he can he can go. He can he can really he can go. And the way he plays with time and all that is yeah. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of favorite drummers and we like them for particular reasons. There's a lot of video. I used to watch a lot of videos, honestly. So someone said, wasn't Mike Clemens playing on that Israel album? He played on the double disc album after Chris Coleman. He played, played on the double disc. He said, Elijah Gilmore, Temple of Luxor. Bro, I have never <laughs> heard of this. <laughs> that, I will look it up. That though. sounds like a, a, a I have, black church. I have Temple never. Temple of Luxor. I have never heard of Church this. of God in Christ, Missionary <laughs> Baptist. That's what that sounds like. Of the Seventh Day at Venice. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Anybody on um on Facebook? Now nah, that's anything? it, man. All right, we so, about to get up out of here, y'all. Hashtag all the way through. It was going to be short, but hey, we made it long. Hashtag all the way through. Hashtag you know what it is. Oh, we on we on break next Monday. What what? <laughs> I'm out of town next Monday. Oh, I'm out of town. I so I guess it. we're on break. I'm just finding out. I'm out of town. My bad. Uh, so, so no. Unless you want to do it, rock, rock dolo. Nah, we'll just uh, can you rock dolo. We'll just uh, wait to the. Or you can have a guest. Well, maybe we'll, we we just have to figure that out. We don't know yet, guys. Uh, right now, plan on it not having another podcast until next Thursday. Unless you see anything different on the IG. If if post, have IG. Yeah, I'll post. post I'll post on, on yeah, the IG. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's up in the air. As a matter of fact, we'll actually post as well if it's canceled on IG. Yeah. Say no, 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 no live, live podcast, podcast today. Um, did Marvin McQuitty play on Israel joint? I don't know, but he Marvin played McQuitty's... on um Fred Hammond's joint. Yep, the Chapters DVD and that Chapters album, the live one. Chris Wright asked, "We can't get out of here." <laughs> Chris Wright asked, "Um, what album did you listen to and knew you wanted to do music?" It wasn't an album. What was it? It was a guy, the drummer that played at my church when I was three, four, five, six, seven, eight years old. His name was Gary Dotson. Okay. I heard him play the drums. I saw him play the drums, and he did this lick, bro. He did the two over two, but it was off the bass drum. And so he would do this thing where he's he put his arm where the bass drum was and be doing a two over two off the bass drum. Two over two and means two me, on the hands, two on the foot. Right, and when you are seven or eight years old, <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It was, <laughs> and when you are seven, six, seven, eight years old, oh, my God. I was like, yo. This is what I want to do in my life. <laughs> I just knew it. <laughs> and on top of that, he let me, he would give me his broken drumsticks. Bro. Uh, XS Crade, XS Crad Z. I don't know what your name is, bro. He said, Do you recommend drummers to learn other rudiments? We already answered the rudiment question um, about 20 minutes ago. So, yeah.
Guys, what do you think about Robert First of C. All, Wright Sput? Oh, Sput? Sput is raw. That's ridiculous. The, off top. He was on the he was on the Kimberell live, live concert, concert album with, with, with Calvin. Calvin. Two yeah. drummers. Willie says, wait, who y'all got out of Earl Spence and Porter? I don't know who either of those are. Who y'all got out of Earl Spence? And Jimerson, I don't know who those people are. Right. And then Marvin Collins then says, Yo, Sticks, can you do a seven nine play along video, please? Seven nine. <laughs> um what? <laughs> Let's just get out of well for, I mean, I, I, I I'm I'm wondering if he's serious because uh yeah, you do understand that the bottom number of, <laughs> it has to be of 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 the time signature even. represents the the okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll save that for another podcast. <laughs> you can't do that. It bro. doesn't exist. You can't just throw out any fractions you want and <laughs> it doesn't exist. You could do, you could play in 7, but it's usually 7 4, yeah. 7 8, 7 16 even. Oh wait, Crod says nah instruments, but Bill Cosby he responded seven, eight. and said, yeah. "Yeah, we answered that too." Yeah, we answered instruments. Kim Burrell's "Everlasting Life" is an instant classic album. Forgot my bad, musician. my bad. I Chris, read. Hold on, hey, Chris, go Wright. back. Hold on, Chris Wright. I, 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 I misread his question. Whose question? Cradzy. I said oh. other rudiments. He said other instruments. Where? He said, "Do you recommend us?" Uh, drummers learning other instruments. We answered that uh, like three podcasts ago. Yes. Yes, I, I would. The piano, something like that, pick it up just to not to like get raw at, but to, to get to help with some understanding of music. Let me answer because he, Chris Wright, says something that, that okay, touched your spirit. He said, Everlasting Life is an instant classic album for gospel musicians, and for a lot of musicians, it is. But for me, the live and concert album for me is like head, neck, shoulders, feet, head, shoulders, knees, and toes above it. <laughs> the the live album to every because I remember like everybody would be like no it's the everlasting life album bro and I listened to it and I was like if I never heard that again but I got to listen to the the to the Kimbrough live in concert forever I would choose it in a heartbeat like it would it would man it's so much better listen to the first to drum me. fill in the intro of the first song on the, the live in concert the album live one was a uh, bro. <laughs> That first feel got me. I and was I'm not like, saying that the Everlasting was whack because by far it wasn't whack. It is a classic for musicians. It is raw. There's so much to get from that. Like, it's ridiculous. But the live one for me, my personal opinion, I will never be able to sit in a room and hear somebody say that it's the Everlasting Life album over that one because it's just not to me. Go listen to the first lick on the live live and concert album, bro. 2009. Sam Campbell says, Enrique Morey. You know what it is out here. Man. Sick no chair. Big oh, he said Marvin said he cle he cleared up his question. He, he doesn't want you playing seven nine. He wants you to play to the seven eight play along track that's on the app. The one the dun, 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 that was a game changer for him. I don't think I've heard "Purpose by Design." Have you? Right, give me. Yeah, I think I have. Give me, give me uh, one song off that album. Yeah, what was what, what, name a, a record off? That Is that project. the song, "The Living Word" on that on that album? You bought the living word. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, I promise you, I'm gonna scroll through this video, <laughs> and I'm gonna find it. Then I'm cutting it for Instagram and I'm posting it, bro. <laughs> like, what in the world is that? <laughs> this is when you're delirious. We're at, we're at the delirious stage of the podcast. We're literally just, yo. We're gonna have to cut cutting before, off right now. Before, before, <laughs> before he says uh, anything else. Uh, my, da, 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 da. Yeah, we said your own flood, Willie. Marvin Collins. Blake uh, says yes. Living Word was on that record. Yeah, on yeah. That album on that Def record. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's what I that's what I thought. Um, what's up? Do you ever practice push pull technique? I like to see a video of you going through the different subdivisions using push pull. If you would like to see a video of that, find someone who has already done that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because we don't <laughs> push and pull it. And, uh, we just play. Um, there's nothing wrong with learning different techniques. Absolutely. Nothing but I think wrong. the only reason that there really is like the reason to learn techniques is if it's to serve your goal. In music and what you do everything is about your goal what are you trying to do what are you trying to get better at man and if you're trying to get better at something that requires a push-pull technique or a push-pull technique makes it easier because just learning technique for technique's sake it's not 
I don't know. I just don't feel like it's necessary. You could if you want to, uh, but I think that uh, I know some people with great push pull technique that sound like trash on the drums when they groove with a band. I've seen it, but they can push pull the mess out of the stick. So it just depends on what your goal is. So if you want to be able to push pull, that's one thing. If you want to be able to sound good with a band, it's another. And if you want to sound good with a band while push pulling, that's a also another thing. Tyrone asked if there's a new Mino Yancey coming out, new Mino Yancey album coming out. We just shot a music. Um, well, number one, there's a, a new record that dropped last month called, called Chauvel. Chauvel. The track, the, the song is actually on the app because it's a song I wrote a while ago, but we actually did it with my band and redid it in a way that is fire. And I'm going to uh, take... Where's it at? Where can they listen to it? Oh, you can listen to it on Spotify. You can listen to it on Apple Music. S-H-O- You can listen to it on Bandcamp. You can listen to it... Okay, go ahead. God, talk it. You can listen to it on... S-H-O- Dash... V-E-L, Show, Vel, Bandcamp, Spotify, iTunes yeah, Music. It's out. That just dropped. It's ridiculous. And it features Anissa Strings on uh, acoustic bass from the Bay Area and also Vadia Man on the vocals. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, we we did shoot uh, two new videos last night. Yes. Uh, so we're going to be true. releasing two new records. Um, I'm hoping we'll, we'll probably start reaching uh, releasing that in January, the uh, first one in January. So releasing one record at a time. Uh, Sam Campbell, what does it profit a man uh, to gain the work of technique? Uh huh, and lose but his lose groove. Come his, on, <laughs> lose his gig. Ah, Bosha, it's quiet in this uh, place. Uh, yep, so it all depends on your goal. We got uh, Eric Thomas, he says, What's up? What's up, fam? St- Stephen C. Johnson asked, He says, I'm an OG, so my eye opener was until I found the Lord from the Love Alive 2 album with Joel Smith. My god. God, May he today. rest in power. It is quiet in this place. Joe Smith has perfect timing. I've seen it live. He came to our city. <clears throat> perfect timing. The the monitor went out. They did a te- live recording for Walter Hawkins. They did a test with the with the rhythm track playing. Yeah, and he wasn't getting any. It was going in and out. Yeah. So then they said, "Okay, stop the recording. Let's just get the monitor right." So they press play on the click track. It's playing in, in the house. Everyone can hear it. He starts grooving with it. Then the sound dude cuts off the monitors to figure out which monitor keeps going in and out along with his. And it was off for like a good 37 seconds. Then he cuts it back on. Joel Smith was dead on with the... I looked at... Uh, y'all don't know his name is Spider, but Stefan. I looked at him like, bro, he's on. Like for 30, that's a long time to not hear the, to go out for a, a bar, um, a measure or two. That's, that's a lot easier, but 37, 45, 40 seconds. You're just like, fam, that is ridiculous. So Joe Smith, rest in power to the legend. Um, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Musa asks, what's the most difficult thing you find yourself trying to figure out on drums right now? Um, timing. I practice where, I only hear the count of one on my metronome every two bars, I believe. So it's like one, one, like that. So yeah, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one. And I'm grooving, soloing, chopping, everything. I'm doing everything with that in mind. And if you slow it down, it gets even harder. So working on that perfect timing. Marvin Collins asked, what do you think of Anika Niles from Germany? Uh, Annika, Annika Niles. Yeah, Annika Niles. Yeah, I guess um, I, I always said Anika Niles. I'm yeah, I used to say Anika right? too. It it's might wrong. be Annika. I, I've heard it several different ways. Oh, okay. Um, I actually think she's dope. She just followed me on Instagram and and spammed my page last week. Spammed um, your page? She just went and liked a bunch of videos. Oh, okay, dope, dope, yeah, dope. So she not because she did that, but she is nice. Yeah, she I think is, she's dope. She is nice on at what she does. She's nice at it. Um, so I followed her back. You know what I mean? Blake the Great said, May Joel Smith rest in pocket. Have you heard of the group Knower? Yes, I, I have. I have it. And I believe Knower is the reason why all other play along sound the way that they do outside of the drum tracks app. Who's Knower? Knower is a, it's a, I'll, I'll show you some records. Okay. It's You've not heard? good? No, nah, it's great. It's phenomenal. It's just, 
it's great. I love their stuff. I have okay. I have like all their albums. Um, except the brand, the newest one. I I didn't get that one yet. What do they um, do? Are they? I was talking about the play alongs. The play. It's it's. They make they make play alongs. No, they're a group. Uh, they one sings and the guy is the producer. But he's gotcha. in all the video. He plays he plays all the music. Okay. It's like um, it's like eighties pop with a mix of futuristic, futuristic out of this world sounds. Got it. If that makes any sense, but yeah, it's it be yeah. A lot of play alongs are just an A and B section with these certain sounds, and I'm like, it sounds like y'all listened to Nowhere and was like, I'm about to make play along track. It's like, yeah, make a full song, bro. Anyway, well, I mean, hey, I think the loops have a purpose. Tony Taylor, bro. Tony Taylor, the drum off champ. You just sent me a video of him uh, murdering, murdering. He's raw. I mean, shout out to y'all who are still in here. Like we we've been done. We just right. we looking up comments. We're responding. Uh, the big Brody, big Brody's in here. Big Brody's in here. Um, Enrique Morel, signal mother chair is in here. I think somebody already uh did the Enrique Morel. Yeah, Sam Campbell did it way early in the podcast and out I of nowhere. He, he, yeah, he said Enrique, <laughs> and I said it out loud. Enrique More. Big Brody chair. is in the building. Uh, we mentioned him as one of our top drummers as well earlier. Uh, Musa says, "What? Whoa, 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 whoa! Because they were asking about did did Eric Moore go to school for graduate oh. from Berkeley and learn to learn how to play yep. drums? Eric, so, you, you can answer for yourself, man. Did did you uh did you go to school for? Did music? you go to school for music? Did for you learn drumming for and drumming? And, yeah, and 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 did going to music school get you to where you're at in your career? Yep, Eric. We're gonna leave some time for Eric to comment on on that. Eric Moore, the Eric Moore is in the YouTube chat for those of you who are watching on Facebook. So." He's about to comment. While he's commenting, Musa asks, what sticks do we use? Um, I use, I'm using bigger sticks now. I was using five A's, but I was getting a lot of blisters. Um, so five B's to three A's. But I would prefer to get some maple, but right now I'm just, you know, hickory. <clears throat> he's using three A Vic Fred. That's what's up. Uh, Eric says, no, sir. I didn't go to music school at all. So I guess that means that he didn't go to music school to get as good as he is. He also didn't go to music school to make his, to get to where he's at in his career, which is playing A-list gigs, sold out tours all over the world. And EK says, uh, the sticks, he, he says dope sticks. I didn't know. Am I allowed to talk about those? I have them. I could show the world or I could show our fans, our followers. If you don't mind, E, I, I can put it on camera. Okay. He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no. Well, I mean, you commented. He said, no. I'm like, bro, I didn't know you could. All right. Uh, Sam says, Quasi Robinson. Quasi, yeah, he, that's, that's Quasi the Brody. Met him at NAM this year, man. We, we, we cool. We follow each other on the gram. He's something special on the drums. Um, that's it. I think that's it, man. Okay. We've been so saying we, that's it. We're just we, like a preacher saying I'm about to close. Hashtag all the way through, man. Are we, we out of here? I'm not, I'm not reading no more comments. Don't, don't, don't comment nothing. Don't <laughs> type nothing. Don't say nothing. Moose is the last one. It says Mr. Moore <laughs> is in the building. That's it. Hey, that's it. Don't say nothing. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Uh, download the Drum Tracks app. If you haven't already, sign up. $9.99 a per month subscription. It's not going to stay that way. We got users signing up, man. We're getting close to the, to the number that I have in mind before we raise the price to $19.99. But for now, it's $9.99, yo. It's, it's, it's on you. Click the link in the bio. Musa, what did I just tell you? <laughs> what, I just, what did I just say? We're going to say peace out to Facebook real quick. What did I just say? Peace, Facebook. Because they, they listen. Okay? I just said don't type nothing. And then he go type something. All right. And so, if, all right, yo. That's all right, y'all on YouTube, man. We'll catch. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace, Magooses. Peace. Magooses. <laughs> Peace.